Microsoft have finally released a two-in-one laptop tablet that has the capability to power your productivity while harnessing a completely integrated personal AI support, proudly titled Copilot Plus. The Surface Pro 11th edition has above average performance thanks to that Snapdragon X Plus and Elite processor and up to 32 gigs of RAM, offering a tablet that performs much closer to a laptop. Let's take a look. Straight out of the box, you get the tablet itself alongside this decently long 39 watt power supply. The power connection uses a specific Surface Pro connector, but it has a USB-C port that supports fast charging with a minimum of 65 watt power supply, so you can charge with an alternative method if needed. As the Surface Pro comes as a standalone tablet, you will need to get the keyboard and stylus separately. We decided to go for the simple Copilot Plus keyboard to use it mostly as a tablet with a fold-out keyboard while making the most of that built-in Copilot key. However, if you're leaning towards something a bit more flexible, the Flex keyboard works both attached and wirelessly, allowing you to work in whatever form you feel comfortable. This new Surface Pro may look like the previous 9th edition, but there are plenty of helpful changes to make it easier to use. The main body is built from 100% aluminium alloy and feels incredibly sturdy, only weighing about 1.97 pounds, feeling feather light under arm or in a backpack. While this platinum silver colouring looks pretty discreet, I do like the look of the blue sapphire and sandy dune colouring for a little added personality, and if you invest in the keyboard and style, they also come in the same colour schemes too, making a matching set pleasing to the eye. Along the back you'll find a much improved integrated kickstand. Though it's thin, it's surprisingly sturdy for angling the tablet freestanding wherever you find comfortable. Even it extends back on itself enough to support the tablet while lying down on a table, making it the perfect support for drawing. I must admit, I wasn't sure at first about the kickstand's capability of holding the tablet firmly in place, but the worry dissipated quickly when positioning the tablet in some pretty precarious ways, giving me confidence to prop it up almost anywhere. When it comes to making video calls or capturing content, the Surface Pro comes with both a 1440p wide-angle Quad HD front and a 10 megapixel Ultra HD rear high-quality camera. It's much better than your standard camera when you bring in the built-in AI features, offering auto-framing, filters, and clear sound so you can guarantee to be seen and heard clearly on every call you make. Along the sides, you do get few necessary ports for connection and charging, with two USB-C ports on the left supporting fast charging and one Surface Connect charging port on the right. Now, the lack of ports can be a little restricting if you need to connect multiple accessories, but it also supports Bluetooth with its own keyboard connections on the base, and most of the accessories can be connected remotely. As the display takes up most of the device, there's a lot to cover here. All variations come in 13 inches with a Pixel Sense Flow Touch capability, but depending on budget, there's the option of choosing OLED or LCD display types. Even choosing the more budget LCD option like we have here, the display still stands out incredibly clear and vivid. It's a 2880 by 1920 resolution with an sRGB color profile file, adaptive colour and contrast, and up to 120Hz dynamic refresh rate. With it having 10-point multi-touch, it's not surprising that it's very responsive even when scrolling and tapping by touch alone. The picture quality watching a few movie trailers felt detailed and bright, and though the screen itself is glossy and prone to glare in a bright room, I feel the brightness really helped here considering it's so versatile, it's easy to position it wherever I felt comfortable. Of course, the huge selling point for me was the slim pen. Now, if you want to experience the full capabilities of this device and make the most of the tablet feature, then that pen just elevates its use. If you purchase the Flex or the standard keyboard, the stylus does come with it and it charges the pen in the dock when not in use, but if you want to, you can just buy the standalone pen as well. Setting it up was quick and easy, even offering a few tests along the way, letting you get a taste of that pressure sensitivity. It's very similar to most styluses on the market with a replaceable tip, a little button on the side, and a click option on the end for quickly opening accompanying apps. I really do love that pressure sensitive feature that worked well within the whiteboard app and I thought that this would make the perfect tool for drawing and creating mood boards for projects. For the most part, the main reason I wanted the pen was also working with the AI creation apps built into the Surface Pro. Tapping the Copilot key on the keyboard opens up Copilot AI Assistant within its own dedicated app, where you can ask it anything and it will generate very detailed text from whatever you prompt. But considering AI images are becoming further integrated into our daily media, it's very helpful to have inbuilt image generation in Copilot too. Now we do have Copilot Plus, which is only found in Microsoft Surface Pros in 2024, and it allows you to create 15 images every day, unlike the 100 that you could produce if you paid for Copilot Pro. But with casual use and very detailed prompts, the images you can create are actually very impressive. Each generation gives you four variations, and the quality of the image was exactly as I imagined with no strange distortions. Now, the benefits of Copilot Plus is that it's smarter than the free version. It accesses the onboard MPU to process requests locally, meaning it doesn't rely on cloud-based systems to work quickly 
and more importantly, accurately. AI is still relatively new and it does have its setbacks, but it's crazy to see how powerful it is when utilizing the power of the specially developed internal processors. You get AI integration across other apps too, like Photoshop for background removal and Co-Creator in Paint, where you can actually turn your basic hand-drawn ideas into realistic creations. These aspects are still a little hit and miss, but I'm sure for the more seasoned creators out there, this tool could be really helpful for those stuck in a creative block, or just need a little inspiration to improve an idea. Even when starting up the Surface Pro, you get a rundown of the new recall feature that Microsoft have been cooking up for their new range of AI devices. Now it's not yet got an official release date, but from what I can tell, it's going to be cutting edge for AI assistant generation. Knowing how secure Microsoft devices are, I'm comfortable that this new feature will quickly come in handy every day. Now it boasts the ability to recall any document, file, website, or image on an easy to view timeline for you to pick at your own leisure. I am pretty scattered on a daily basis, so having this level of organization is just what I've been looking for. Okay, so I know it's coming last, but it's worth the wait. Let's get into the specs and the battery life here. This machine runs on a Snapdragon X Plus with the option to choose the X Elite on the OLED version if you need a bit more power. It's got a Qualcomm Adreno GPU and that all important Qualcomm Hexagon MPU for powering all of your AI processes. You can choose from 16 or 32 gig, and though you do get 256 gig SSD as standard, it is removable with the choice of upgrading to 512 or even one terabyte in storage if you need it, which is amazing for a two-in-one to have. From what I've experienced over a day, the performance is impressive considering that it's a two-in-one machine. Yes, I haven't tried it with gaming or higher performance apps like editing software for instance, but I didn't see any struggle with loading times, no sign of lag no matter what app I launched, and just seamless performance consistently throughout use, and that's a huge improvement on previous versions of the Surface, proving that Microsoft are onto something here. I know not everyone is on board with the Snapdragon processor considering their ARM restrictions on certain apps, but what's mostly overlooked is the positive impact on the battery life. The specifications state that with constant video playback or web interaction, the battery can easily last 14 hours on full charge. Now I only had to charge the device once when I first opened it, and even after a full day of playing video content, keeping the screen on for the majority of the time, and using the touchscreen extensively, the battery only went down by 60% over 7 hours. So after using the Surface Pro for a good few hours, I'd say that it's a brilliant productivity machine, perfect for creators and general use. The touchscreen and pen combo makes it ideal for illustrators and artists on the go, and the storage adaptability means you can run high performance programs and store data on the device easily without needing too many additional accessories. The AI potential here is definitely a major draw, as it can already do so much, and with recall coming in the future, it's really handy to have assistance whenever you need it. So what are your thoughts on Microsoft's new Surface Pro? Let us know in the comments below, and if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Box, where we have plenty of hands-on reviews on the latest tech. And as always, thanks for watching.